So next topic is swap abstraction or native Z-swap. So what is the problem here? Uh, the problem here is that the current implementation of Z-swap is that Z-swap is just an in-memory compressed cache for swap. The way it is implemented is that it is, it's very conveniently placed at the very last step before swapping out or swapping in a page so that the rest of MM doesn't have to be aware of it, which is very convenient from an implementation point of view, but it also has a few problems. First of all, you cannot use Z-swap without having an actual swap file on desk. The second thing is, if you do have Z-swap and the backing swap file, you end up actually wasting capacity when you're using Z-swap because every time a page lands in Z-swap, it, it, its slot on the swap desk has to st still be reserved. So this is wasted swap capacity that you have to keep around but not actually use. And then if you're, if you, if you're swapping out a path and uh, a page and you end up putting it in Z-swap, then you end up executing some code that you don't really need. Like for example, you have to go through the swap slots and cluster management and all this code in the swap file to figure out what to do, but then you end up not doing anything with it and then just compressing the page. The fourth part is that Reclaim is unaware of Z-swap. Reclaim today will decide to swap a page not knowing if it will end up being compressed or going to a swap file. And then in the long term, we want to factor in memory tiering and Z-swap versus a far memory tier, which is faster, it would be nice if Reclaim knows uh, which is which so that it can make informed decisions about where to put the pages. So who, who cares about all this? Uh, Google cares, uh, obviously, because we have been using Z-swap without backing swap files in our fleet for over a decade now. So uh, we can say that it is a valid use case from our side. There is some interest from Chrome OS and Android in, in this. I don't know if it's going to actually be a, have a valid use case, but there is some interest. Uh, Meta is interested, as far as I know, especially in terms of losing capacity on swap files when they use Z-swap. Uh, it was also mentioned on the mailing list that Kate of Ops also have a similar thing to Google, where they use Z-swap with a swap file, but they intend to never actually use a swap file, it's just there to allow them to use Z-swap. Thank you. So. Uh, the proposal change after like a lot of discussion in the mailing list. This is the very the simplest idea that we can do in the short term, uh, which is basically introduce a simple indirection layer in the form of this X array right here. We can have uh, instead of putting the swap entry directly in the page tables or the Schmin page cache, we can have an index into a radix tree, put in the page tables and and Schmin page cache, and also use it to index the swap cache, and then this X array can tell us which swap file we're using, and then we can use what I would call a virtual swap file for Z-swap, which basically would be a swap infrastructure that we would use to keep the implementation as uh, close to the day as possible to represent Z-swap, and then write back would be moved outside of Z-swap, which is already an ongoing effort, to be just uh, moving entries from one swap file to another. So uh, there is already, yeah, okay, never mind. So yeah, so this is basically just the proposed short-term solution. I'm not very fond of this. I would like to go to the medium-term solution, which I think is, uh, might as well do the nicer thing. So fundamentally we have the same thing, that, but instead of having to use a hack and have like a virtual swap file or swap infrastructure for Z-swap, we actually uh, abstract away the swap operations and then we have read page, write page, duplicate, free, all, all the things that we do today with swap files, which are already implemented for swap files. But then we also uh, implement the missing ones for Z-swap. So Z-swap already has the equivalent of read page, write page, alloc. We just need to implement things like swap counting in Z-swap. And then this XRA contains an encoded swap entry, which basically using the lower bits and the pointers like Matthew likes to do, to uh, either have a swap entry or a pointer to a Z-swap entry. So in this case, uh, basically we go through the X-Array and then we know, okay, this page is in a swap file, this page is in Z-swap, and then we act on it accordingly, and then when write back happens, we just update this X-Array. The page tables remain the same, page cache remain the same, every, every, everyone's happy. And this enables other optimizations in the future, like swap off, you don't need to go walk the page tables to do swap off anymore, you can just change things in this, in, in this X-Array directly and also, you have the option to drop the swap entry once you swap in a page because the page tables no longer have the actual swap entry, they just have an index in this X-ray. Uh, 
Right, so this is the uh, medium term idea that I'm uh, more in favor of. A more long term idea, which was actually the original proposal, uh, is, uh, and actually, can, can you actually go back? Sorry. Yeah, so there is already an, a red black tree inside Zswap that maps swap entries to Zswap entries. So this X array is basically pulling this outside of Zswap and generalizing it to other swap files. And then the write back logic already lives in Zswap. So we would also be pulling that out of Zswap. So this is generalizing some things that Zswap does today to all swap files and letting Zswap just handle what it should handle, which is just compressing memory. Uh, next slide, please. Right, so a, an even longer term idea is to even go one step further with the abstraction and instead of having the X-ray have like a swap entry or a Z-swap entry pointer, we can just have a swap descriptor. The swap descriptor can have the same encoded swap entry, which can be a swap slot in a swap file or a Z-swap entry or uh, whatever we need. And then we can directly store the swap cache here as just a folio pointer. You don't need to do anything more than that. And we also can put the swap count in there. And what this buys us is that we have a common place to implement swap counting, swap cache, and all this is independent from the underlying implementation of the swapping backend. It could be Z-swap, swap file, something else in the future. It, it doesn't matter. All the core swapping code act, uh, acts on a swap descriptor that's independent of the actual implementation. And uh, can you go to the next one? This basically buys us a cleaner abstraction and potential for a lot of code cleanups. We can get rid of things like swap address spaces for swap caches and, and the current swap counting code, which is fairly complex. Uh, but obviously there are like problems that come with this in terms of memory overhead. We have to buy the, we, we, ha we have to pay the price of a swap descriptor for every swap, swap dot page, which is about 0 0.6 to 0.8% of the size of memory that's actually in swap. And then for things like cluster read ahead for uh, rotating desks, we would need to have some way to, we have a swap entry and we wanna like swap in the next 10 swap entries. So we need to give in that to go back to the swap descriptor to be able to uh, operate on it. So we would need to have a reverse mapping, which is even worse. And then generally this would be a larger surgery in the code. You'd be changing the swap counting implementation, swap cache implementation. So this is something that we can just keep in the back of our minds for the long term, I guess. <laughs> and uh, Chris, you have another long term idea, but before we move on, any questions that people have? Matthew? Um, so the cluster read ahead thing that we do for, for spinning media, that just needs to die. <laughs> I, I fully agree, I fully um, agree. And, and, and I, I, I think folios are how it dies, right? Because, uh, because we need to get to the point where we're not writing out individual pages, we're writing out entire folios. So that naturally gives us the contiguous logical is the same thing as contiguous physical. And at that point, we don't need to do this reverse mapping trick. We can just do a logical read ahead. And honestly, that's what we should be doing anyway and everything gets more efficient, and, and, and we can delete a whole bunch of crafty code that was introduced for spinning Rust. Yeah, and I would just add that uh, uh, people with rotating or very slow disk avoid using swap on, under all costs, so uh, we probably are optimizing for somebody who is not really interested in that at all. Yeah, I, I just want to note that uh, cluster data is not currently only used for rotating disks, it's also used for shmem in general, even on non-rotating disks, so we may need to bounce some code around to get around that. It, 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 isn't that still basically legacy? Like no, no, nobody did the optimization to like get rid of that because I mean TempFS should be using larger allocations, right? So if it, so, I'm, I'm saying that ShimFS also gets the same space. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree. I'm just saying today we're not just doing that for rotating disks, but yeah. And uh, yeah, any other questions before we move on to the other long-term approach? Yes, please. Uh, uh, actually, it's not about the uh, problem you address, but I have some thought about the uh, GSWAP related to the CXL DRAM. Because, uh, you know, I think uh, the underlying idea of GSWAP and CXL DRAM is counters because uh, the G G GSWAP, it basically, it consume, uh, it, uh, a GSWAP condition, the CPU is available more, but the memory is limited, but CXL, uh, so it is a different. CXL, the CPU is a CXL one, 
the CPU is available, the memory is limited. So, so we thought uh, the utility that the, uh, Google is using G-Swap, but uh, what if, if you adopt a CXL DRAM, then you have uh, the more memories, then probably in that case, the, the swap, swap pass will be used, but what if you can you use the CXL DRAM without compression? You're basically saying if we do have a reliable CXL for memory based solution, then do we need this up at all? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, so we are making some subtest text for CXL DRAM, and we made uh, the so, so called the CXL swap. Uh, it is a implement, it implements a prompt swap, but without compression. So, I see. Yeah. So, how do you think this makes sense for your use case? I, uh, this is a question that we're actively looking into. I don't think we currently have an answer, as far as I know. If anyone in the room has a better answer, please correct me. But it is something that we're looking into, but I don't think we have a definitive answer of, yes, we this will work for us, we don't need Z-Swap anymore, or no, this will not work for us. I don't think we, we have the answer at hand. Uh, just a comment. Uh, I think uh, it's a good idea, but on the other hand, I mean, CXL, the one of the benefit of CXL is a cache line access. If we reduce that to be a swap device, then, I mean, how is that different from other like RDM based solution, right? So I think we are not really fully utilize, utilizing CXL for its full, band, full potential if we only use it as a swap. You, you had a point? No, 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 I don't. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. Right, so yeah, that is an open question, but like I said, I think there's uh, more applications to CXL and also we don't have an answer today of what we want to do when, when we have a ready farm memory solution. Yeah, and I would just say that uh, you, you do not have to use swap, right? <laughs> so, uh, but if uh, people are planning to use swap as a form of reclaim, then it's probably good to look into some way how to make it long-term better scale for a new world rather than rotating disk that is heavily optimized for. So I think that something needs to be done in that direction. Right, all right, I, I fully agree. Like, I, I, my main concern is that someone would say, no, we still need cluster read ahead. If no one cares, then you, yeah, by all means. <laughs> so uh, one more thing I, I like to add is that um, we're not sure whether uh, CXL memory would be uh, available for uh, client devices. And our client devices, uh, namely Android and Chrome OS, um, you know, are um, highly uh, relying on this model, ZRAM. So if uh, you know, CXL memory would be available for those devices, then that'd be great. Yeah, w w one question I have before I hand over to Chris to the room. So with, with something like this, we incur, uh, for ZSwap, there's no extra overhead. We actually can save a bit of memory, but for uh, like swap files on desk, we pay the extra overhead of the, having the XRA on the way, which is eight bytes in the best case, I'm guessing. And then for that, it's even more, it's like, uh, 20, 30 bytes per swap entry, which is 6 to 8, 0.6 to 0.8 percent. So, how much do people, how much people think this is, this is basically, how bad do people think this is in terms of overhead for swap? Anyone with any thought? It, it seems like a small enough overhead that I'm, I'm not willing to squawk about it. The only concern is if you're doing memory allocation in the swap path, then you need to be very careful. And but I'm sure you know that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, th there has been there has been ideas like if, if we use Slab for them, then Slab is already somehow will have a cache for it, and then we were also talking about if there's a way to. I don't know what I've heard the talk, but till Slab. This is this allocation is used on the reclaim path. We'd want to prefetch more eagerly, but I don't want to go there. <laughs> yes, that's what uh, swap over NFS or NBD in general all about, and that's really tricky code. And regarding the overhead, uh, we used to have uh, that uh, swap tracking in MemCG in V1 uh, once upon a time, and uh, the overhead still do. We don't have that. Which, which version? Which kernel version? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> okay. it was an old thing, but uh, even back back then, the overhead was considered to be quite high for some people. So, for example, we as Slash didn't have that code enabled by default. And, but I mean, times are changing, so maybe that overhead can be digested by much better these days. I don't know. Yeah. 
And is that overhead really per page or per folio? That's a very good question. Uh, that would be per folio as far as I can tell. The swap cache should be per folio. The swap count, if we're swapping in the whole folio, it should be, everything should be per folio as far as I can tell, so yeah. So if it, when, when Matthew's done this, the overhead will be lower. So here's one more uh, spoiler for tomorrow's talk for you about anonymous uh, folios. But yeah. anyway, uh, I will hand over to Chris now. Uh, Hi, um, the other idea I have is uh, basically a more VFS-like uh, implementation for the swap file, which allow individual swap device, they have their own implementation of how they manage the uh, free slot and uh, uh, how they manage the uh, swap count, et cetera. And then uh, depend, we can basically assign one swap file that uh, for the Z-swap or something, and then the other one doesn't, so that it doesn't have to pay that uh, these, basically the uh, accelerate in front of, because this one is, uh, if you turn that on, it will impact every swap file there, and then the idea mostly, that can we narrow down these to only impact the Z-swap and not the other one, and allow the other one to keep their current behavior? And, and if somebody prefer that, or we just like, I'm just worried that somebody say, oh, uh, since we make this change and then like my swap file or the, my, my uh, per swap entry usage go up after I swap something. And uh, we know that the usage case, the machine will constantly have some swap, like uh, Google tried to aim 20% of the memory swap and then Android's roughly the same, like 20%. Uh, so how much memory that corresponding that you act because of making this change and then I will end up that we can save a little bit, it actually probably matter for some people. Or at least I'm not brave enough to assume that, okay, those, those memory wastes doesn't really matter. Like I want to retain the possibility to get them back uh, with, with some kind of option. And pretty much that's, that's it. Yep. It, Any questions related to that? Isn't that a question that, that Google can ask itself, like ask the Android people if 0.6% is too much for them? Like, don't you guys have the data? Yeah, well, we have a formula to calculate like, how, how much memory it translates to how many engineering times, and yeah. <laughs> I haven't done the calculation, but I, I'm sure it will be some, it's, it's non-zero engineer, basically, it would be. But, but I mean, like you're saying, like to decide between VFS and the other thing. You're saying that asking the room about are these overheads too much to pay for that for that direction? So we should go this this direction. Is that the question you're asking? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Provide an option so that we don't have to pay that per uh, entry sw per swap out page entry for for those like those those are always resident in the memory. After you swap them out, you have to keep some. Another idea is that maybe we can do a second level thing. Some of these entry metadata, they get right to the SSD, and then you, you kind of like file system, you do uh, I know, you load the I know first, and then you load the uh, corresponding block, and, and same can be done for swap, but basically you do a two block read in order to actually locate the page, and then you can uh, save some memory that you always keep in the system. So, so I remember people, including me, complaining about swap code for a long time, and it's always been like, can we just rewrite, <laughs> yeah. re rewrite it in a VFS file like style of way? So, would would the last proposal actually take us closer to that than the yes. other one? With a, so, like, then I would most certainly prefer that one. Yeah, I uh, mean, the, you, you'll that, have to rewrite everything again. Like you'd still be like we're rewriting everything. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, rewriting job security. <laughs> one, one, one thing I'd like to point out is that through the slides, ignore, ignoring the first proposal, so this is just about how far people are willing to take it. So this is minimal overhead, but like the least abstraction possible. This is the cleanest abstraction, but more overhead, obviously. And then this is this is a way to remedy the overhead of, of, of previous ones. So it's, it's just about how much overhead and how much complexity the community is willing to pay 
to this. And, and also, it's important to point out that in, in this case, if Z-Swap is not enabled, this X-Array can just disappear. If Z-Swap is not configured or not enabled, then the swap index can just be the swap entry. We don't need to pay the overhead if Z-Swap is not used on the system. If it's, if it's all swap files, we can just do what we do today and, and, and use the swap entries. Yeah, yeah but if, if you come to LSF and, and show people the pony, David, and people are gonna say, we want the pony. Like, like if, if you show, if we do all this work, we get the, the best thing, that's what everybody wants. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're, no one's gonna tell you like, oh, put in some technical debt, we'll let you get away with it kind of thing. Or like, if you show us to the end, to the, Right, the best thing we're gonna ask, that's what we, yes, the best. Right, but the, <laughs> the, the, the more you want, the more you pay in terms of... Well, you pay, you have to do the work. Right, <laughs> right but, but you also have to pay in terms of code complexity, right? Nothing is free, so if, if you want to decrease the overhead, you have to pay in code complexity and maintain, maintenance also, so. It, it, as it looks, uh, if you go to the VFS style, in the end it will be less code complexity, so it will be <laughs> some transition, but in the end it will be written as, as it should have been, so uh, that's, that's a pony. Right. But yeah, I, I guess I guess we should have thought about engineering time before we came here. But <laughs> <laughs> definitely something to think about for the next house. Next up, the last proposal. <laughs> <laughs> so this one. And uh, how, how much are you willing to contribute towards it? <laughs> Can we switch? <laughs> Okay, I guess uh, if no one else have more questions, we can give everyone five more minutes of break. Anyone? Calling once, calling twice. Okay, five more minutes. <laughs>